As we've seen, uranium occurs throughout the Earth's crust, being about 500 times more abundant than gold and about as common as tin. It is present in most rocks and soils as well as in rivers and in the sea. It's found at about four parts per million in granite, and since granite makes up 60% of the Earth's crust, you can see that it's everywhere. Fertilizers contain uranium concentration as high as 400 parts per million, which makes them almost an ore body. And some coal deposits contain uranium concentrations greater than 100 parts per million. Seawater contains approximately 3.3 milligrams of uranium per cubic meter. That's 3.3 parts per billion. This resource is gigantic. If recoverable, this amount is limitless compared to the world demand. If even a portion of uranium in seawater could be used, the entire world's nuclear fuel for power generation could be provided for thousands of years. Well, so as not to tell a part truth, if the seawater has to be pumped more than a few feet in height, the pump work is more than the energy that can be recovered from the uranium. To end on a more positive note, by using tides and new recovery techniques worked out in the last few years, uranium from seawater is probably within a factor of two or so from being economically feasible. Back on land, it's the chemistry of uranium that usually prevents it from concentrating locally. It's just too soluble in the presence of oxygen. However, geologic anomalies have occurred at a number of places around the world so that the concentration of uranium there is sufficiently high that mining is economically feasible. These anomalies usually consist of places where oxygenated groundwater carrying uranium met with a reducing agent, such as petroleum deposits, buried wood, or peat. The uranium is reduced and the valence four compounds are insoluble and deposit at the reduction site. In the absence of oxygen, the deposits are geologically stable. Well, how do we find these uranium ore deposits? Uranium prospecting is pretty much the same as other mineral exploration, except for the specialized instruments that exist for detecting the presence of radioactive ores. The Geiger counter was the original radiation detector, and was the principal instrument used for uranium prospecting for many years, until Geiger counters were replaced by scintillation counters. Scintillation counters are 10 to a 1,000 times more sensitive than Geiger counters. In the late 1940s, several folks had the bright idea to put these scintillation detectors on airplanes and look for deposits from the air. Airborne gamma ray detection is now the leading technique for uranium prospecting. A deposit of uranium discovered by geophysical techniques is evaluated and sampled to estimate the amount of uranium that could be extracted at specified cost. Uranium reserves are the amount of ore that are estimated to be recoverable at specified cost. Known ore resources, which can be mined at about the current cost, are estimated to be sufficient to provide fuel for about a 100 years, based on the 2006 nuclear energy generation rate. Uranium ore is removed from the ground in one of three ways, depending on the location of the deposit. Uranium deposits close to the surface can be recovered using the open pit mining method, and underground mining methods are used for deep deposits. Sometimes the ore may be extracted by in situ recovery, a process that dissolves the uranium while still underground and then pumps the uranium solution to the surface. 
When uranium ore is found within a hundred meters of the surface, open pit mining is usually used. Open pit mining begins by removing the overburden and waste rock on top of the ore body to expose the hard rock. Then a pit is excavated to expose the ore. The walls of the pit are mined in a series of benches or steps to prevent collapse of the walls of the pit. To mine each bench, holes are drilled in the rock and loaded with explosives, which are detonated to break up the rock. The resulting broken rock is then hauled to the surface in large trucks that carry up to 200 tons of material at a time. If the uranium is too far below the surface for open pit mining, an underground mine might be used with tunnels and shafts dug to access and remove the uranium ore. There is less waste material removed from underground mines than open pit mines. However, this type of mining exposes underground workers to the highest levels of radon gas.